Are you ready for a change of pace with your Oregon outdoor adventures this winter? How about a visit to Oregon snow country? Now don't be alarmed, even if you don't downhill ski or snowboard, this adventure is perfectly suited to newcomers. Hi there, Grant McComey here, your host for Travel Oregon's Grant's Getaways. And this week, something different as we head into the Mount Hood National Forest down a trail you may have missed. We're learning all about the tips, the tactics, the techniques for snowshoeing down the Trillium Lake Trail. Jeff, Gene, and Emmy are good friends who love to play in the snow. Keeps them feeling young and active in the wintertime. Plus, it's a fun adventure to see someplace new, like the Trillium Lake Trail in the Mount Hood Forest, where they've discovered snowshoes. Easier, because they're not as heavy. I thought they would be really heavy, but they're light. It's opened up the Oregon outdoors in ways they never dreamed. It's really beautiful, even though it's not too sunny today. And they're not alone. Thousands of folks have discovered that Oregon's winter landscape is inviting and easy to travel with a pair of snowshoes strapped to the boots. We love to hike, and yeah. we're not really into skiing and snow, uh, snowboarding, so we figured invest in some snowshoes and get out here during the winter months. Fresh air, scenery, fewer people out on the trails than maybe during the summer months. Less touristy, kind of the hardcore Oregonians. Trillium Lake is pretty mystic looking with the fog over right now. It's frozen over, so it's pretty cool. So if you're a true Oregonian or Northwest, the rain or wintry <laughs> mix doesn't throw you off. So you just go do it. If you've never done it before, you might stop in and chat with an expert. Someone like Aaron Harry at REI. You remember the old style where it looked like a tennis racket? It's the same basic principle and shape just now with newer materials. Erin really knows snowshoes. She's been enjoying the sport the past decade and says the shoes you choose have come a long way over the years. Nowadays, lightweight aluminum and a good flexible plastic, fairly malleable that uh, will withstand cold temperatures and not crack in cold temperatures. When you shop, look for a one-step binding system that allows you to simply step in, pull one strap, Buzzing. and tighten your boot into and the shoe. Cool. And about those boots, think about how you'll play in the snow, and above all, think waterproof. Set. What you are using the snowshoes for determines your footwear. If you're doing recreational and light hiking, wear a light hiking boot. If you're running and racing in your snowshoes, wear your waterproof uh, running shoes. All of the bindings should allow for all those types of boots. Clothing's critical too. Aaron says be prepared for the winter outdoors by layering with synthetic based clothing that wicks the moisture away and top it all off with a waterproof, windproof jacket. Layering is far more beneficial than a heavy jacket because you can uh, eliminate a layer as you get warmer and you can add that layer when you stopped and you're eating something and it's cooler as well. So layering is very, very important and very beneficial. She adds that many local outdoor stores, including REI, have responded to increased interest in snowshoeing with clinics. Experts show and tell about the varied styles of shoes. The length or how much surface area and then what type of traction underneath. Offer advice on proper clothing to wear and then help you decide where to go for that first adventure. Which brings us back to Trillium Lake, one of the best beginner sites around. It's a pretty good uh, decline as you're just heading in, a little bit of elevation loss, but then it's flat and it's wide all the way around the lake. It's usually a good full day, and uh, especially if it's your beginning and if the snow is really powdery and thick, uh, it will take longer for you to hike around. So bring a lunch, bring some good energy food and lots of water. As aerobic as it is, you lose more water even though it's cold outside, you lose more than you think. So water is very, very important. Stay hydrated. Well, this is an excellent workout and it's beautiful scenery. And so I had a great time. Wow. So beautiful. Getting here was my favorite part because it's so beautiful and like a nice little reward at the end of a two mile hike. Some parts were tough just because it got really hot, but it was mostly flat the whole way. It took us maybe an hour to do the two mile hike up here, but we were going off roads a lot and just playing around in the snow. <laughs> so that was fun. You don't have to be in great shape. If you can hike, you can snowshoe. So.
That part of snowshoeing is absolutely true, and there are many other places beyond Trillium Lake that you can check out. You might consider Frog Lake, White River Snow Park, and the Tilly Jane District on the north side of Mount Hood. Something else to keep in mind, this winter has been weather fickle. That is, the snow level has risen and fallen thousands of feet each week. So check the snow conditions and the weather forecast before you go, especially if it's turning warmer and the forecast is for more rain in the mountains. That could make it harder to stay dry and you may want to have a backup plan if the lower elevation sites are just too wet. We've provided all the details, directions, and contact information so you can make your own snowshoe adventure. We've provided that information right here on the Travel Oregon website. So until next week, get out here and make your own Oregon outdoor adventures and let Travel Oregon be your guide. For Travel Oregon, I'm Grant McComey.